Kelly reporting live from the International Palestine Hotel here in Baghdad, Iran. It is a lovely Tuesday morning here. The situation seems calm, peaceful, and very friendly. This is Baghdad. Oh. That's pretty rough. I'm pretty far. There's no announcement or anything. The train just turns up. Here's the Baghdad train station there. Pretty sick. Pretty nice and science. Apparently it was built by the British in the 40s. We. Oui. Uh, I don't really have a hotel book, so I'm just gonna... <laughs> I'm going to the International Palestine, which has got bad reviews. Everything's got bad reviews. Check out how dramatic those clouds are, though. Look at that. Amazing. So, I just checked in to the famous Palestine Hotel, sometimes called the Palestine which is the hotel in the center of Baghdad, where most journalists used to stay to cover the wars and everything that was going on here in Baghdad. It was built in the 80s and it was run by a French company and um, it was very prestigious. It reminds me of the Grand Budapest Hotel when it, was, when it had its heyday and then you have it now. I reckon this place in the 80s was amazing. It's withstood bombings and all sorts of attacks and stuff. Although people were killed here before from a tank fire. And some journalists, in fact. So I think that was in 2003. So all of this was at least 20 years ago now. I just checked in. It's $85 for a night. That's the cheapest room. The bed is massive, to be fair. And the room's quite big and spacious. It's all dated as... But the best thing is the view, as it looks over the Tigris River, which is fantastic. So if we just step out onto the balcony here, which is fun. I mean, everything here is, you have to just, you have to come here knowing that, and you are basically staying in, in history and not in a five-star hotel like it once was. I mean, look at these, they're like art deco style concrete shields. But after a 12-hour uh, train where I got about 20 minutes of sleep on the whole thing, then to be able to check in straight away is amazing. Staff also should not be working in hospitality, let's say. They all speak English, some level of English, which is very impressive here. But I, no one smiled at me or anything. And they, they were like, what are you doing here? Like, what the fuck are you talking about it's a hotel what the fuck do you think i'm doing here like, that's what the first person asked me they just went what what are you doing i mean should i be staying here <laughs> and then I, after paying 85 dollars the guy who helped me bring my stuff up to the room bear in mind i don't have five suitcases i have one fucking backpack was then hovering around for a tip as well he just wouldn't leave he was like okay okay i was like yes okay fuck up I mean, this is what I imagine the rooms in the Titanic look like. All right, so I'm just strolling around central Baghdad. And as you can see behind me, everyone's beeping me out. Everyone thinks I want a lift in a taxi. So this is a church, a Syriac Orthodox church or something. They were the flags of Iraq and the Holy See, or the Vatican City. The graffiti was done when Pope Francis came here uh, in 2021. He had a visit to Iraq. And Pope Paul, I think, was supposed to do that a few years ago, like 10, 20 years ago or something. I'm not up to date with when the Popes were in place. Um, but Saddam blocked the visit. And so if we look to this wall as well, there's Mr. Pope Francis. And it says, welcome to Iraq over there behind those things. How crazy is that? And you've got the Last Supper over there. <laughs> I did not expect to see this stuff here. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, thank you. There you go. Yeah, Your message in English. You are good. You are oh, good. Go on, go on. Okay. If you want welcome, to get welcome, <laughs> welcome, London. Welcome. Yes. There you go. Okay. If you want to get your hair cut in Baghdad, what's his face? Mo Mohanad. 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 Uh, Lamsa. Is this you? Uh, my name is uh, Ala. Mohanad Lamsa. Kasali. <laughs> From Kashmir. From Kashmir. He's not Taliban. No one Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, Ala. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Amazing. London, London? Shukra. Uh, London. Let's all go to London. Thank you. Yeah, I just got out of the hairdressers. Uh, and then by that point, it was iftar. So uh, everyone was eating. Everyone was out on the street. Saw the kebab shop opened and everything. It all kicked off. It's actually pretty cool. 
there are ups and downsides of being here during Ramadan as a non-Muslim but the iftar uh, experience and everything is pretty cool so I went to get some uh, some street uh, kebab stuff why well, it's the Iraqi bread with falafel in it it was amazing the guy in there spoke English perfect English turns out he lived in Finland for 12 years so uh, he I assume speaks Finnish as well I'm just walking back into the Palestine now so I just smashed down the uh, falafel bread thingy while I was chatting to the guy who lived in Finland and then uh, all sorts of other people just appear when you hang around these places especially during iftar the guy who was uh, taking the orders and stuff he used to live in germany for five years so he was trying to speak to me in german and then some other random guy appeared and he had been in the uk before uh, he'd worked with the americans uh, when they were out here in iraq in the early 2000s so he spoke perfect english as well it's incredible what kind of people are here and i got this drink which is uh, some kind of pomegranate watery thing sorry it's pissing it down and he said, oh, it's not ready, it's not ready. But then he was like, okay, I'm gonna give you one. So what they do is they freeze it and you have it during the day when it's really hot. But because I said I like the look of it so much, he just gave me a half frozen one. This hotel, Palestine, is so run down, but it's brilliant at the same time. Now look at this. This is the lift and the doors open so fast that they would chop your leg off. It's like living in the Orient Express. And there's actually a counter downstairs which has the Orient Express plaque on it for when the Orient Express was, I guess, running. And you would then go from Istanbul to Baghdad uh, as well. I'll see if I can catch these doors slamming shut. Now they did it slowly. That's not how they usually go. Also, look at this. Like, look at these things. It's incredible. Okay, I forgot what room I'm in now. I can't imagine there's anyone else here to be honest but there are but i can hear doors going all the time i forgot to mention he gave me this for free just like with so many things here they're just like okay take it take it don't worry about it good morning everybody this is my second day in baghdad i've just gone down to the breakfast bar in the palestine and again the restaurant looks like the titanic so for breakfast here we got an omelet a bunch of cheeses and jams and stuff cucumbers bread rolls tea we've got a lentil soup it's very much looking like a turkish breakfast and look at this massive ashtray and flowers and the old like mahogany wood and everything it's fantastic it's like being in a museum it's like staying and eating in a museum i know it's built in the 80s which is actually quite recent because this looks like it's 100 years old the reviews for this place now are atrocious but i think people are expecting <clears throat> modern five star standards you know but you gotta remember that's not what's going to be happening iraq's been decimated by war for the past 20 years and longer so today i'm going to try and squeeze in a lot of sightseeing in baghdad i'm gonna smash it straight to the uh, main iraqi museum which has all the artifacts from uh, Mesopotamia, all the Sumerian culture, uh, Babylonian, Arcadian, etc, etc. So uh, that's an unmissable thing to do, I think, if you're in Baghdad. I'm going to change hotels as well, because as much as I love the international Palestine and its history, uh, it is $85 a night. And there's a hotel just down the street called the Gilgamesh, and that's $50 a night. So. I'm going to go there. If you want to do a, a tour of Babylon and Najaf or something, you have to do, well, you have to get a private driver, really. And you can go to the garage and there's loads of drivers there and you can just ask one of them, oh, I need to go here, here, here. But I have no idea how much they charge you because they'll still charge you quite a lot. Um, and you have no idea who you're going with. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Like people tell me it's okay, but I'd rather have something planned with an itinerary um, and someone who can maybe speak a little bit of English definitely helps. Um, I think if you're in a group of people, it's maybe different, but I don't really want to just walk into a carriage just on my own uh, and just say Babylon, Babylon, take me to Babylon. But these private tours, I've spoken to a few people and they're minimum like $150, usually $180, maybe $200. Uh, that's for a full day with a driver uh, and you go to wherever you know you kind of want to go to. So, I don't know, again, if you split that between two or three people, then it's really not too bad. But one person paying $200 for a day is quite a lot. So if you do that a few times in Iraq, then you're gonna get drained. Who'd have thought Iraq was 
it's fucking expensive as a tour is. Okay, anyway, let's go down onto the ground. So look at these boards on the side of the road. Amwaj International, Iraqi Gates Oasis. Like, it looks amazing. So I'm just walking along Al Zara Park, somewhere in the center of Baghdad. And there's a planetarium in there. Uh, it doesn't look like it's been used for a very, very long time. It looks very Soviet, but there's a planetarium. Fucking pissing it down. It's like a storm, proper storm here. Look at this. Fuck, man. It's so windy, you can't hear anything. I'm worried this little thing I'm in is going to blow over. It's just like some police check thing. I think it rained for about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, and the place is absolutely flooded. Everybody around me was jumping in taxis and getting out of here, but I've walked so far to get to this park because I'm near one of the monuments, the Save Iraqi Culture Monument. So I had to take shelter in like a bus station -y thing, which was absolutely horrible. And now I'm drenched. I've noticed even the floor tiles here are in the flag colors of Iraq, white, black, and red. And oh, there's a huge fucking lake in front of me. Fuck, so. So I found the culture monument. And these guys are just graffiti on it. They're just fucking drawing on it. Like, what the fuck? The monument's supposed to be about preserving cultural heritage in Iraq. So as it turns out, everyone does some graffiti in on this statue. It's absolutely covered in signatures and bullshit stuff, obviously. So this sculpture is covered in uh, cuneiform language, the language that was used by the Sumerians, uh, Akkadians, Babylonians, etc. All the ancient civilizations that uh, blossomed in Mesopotamia here in Iraq. Some five armed dude fucking shredded abs and stuff trying to hold up this ancient pillar covered in the history of this land okay so i've seen the monument i was looking forward to seeing the most it didn't disappoint it's pretty sick so now i'm gonna keep walking around i'm gonna head over to the green zone now so the green zones are all the embassies are and all that stuff because there's a there's another monument there i think and that's on the way back over the bridge so i'm gonna head over there so goodbye <laughs> So I just got a taxi to the Martin Monument, you can see it over there, awesome thing. Uh, obviously it's closed, as with everything right now. Um, the taxi took me over an hour when it should, it took about 20 minutes, and then it closed during the time I was in the taxi. I got out of the taxi, and I can hear what I assume are fireworks, I can't see anything. But you'll be, uh, you'll be forgiven for mistaking that for gunfire. I don't know what the hell's going on. There's so many military around here. I don't really want to record, to be honest. Okay, I just checked into the Gilgamesh hotel and this is $50 now they only accepted either a 50 or a $100 bill uh, fives tens and twenties were not enough apparently so that was a pain in the ass so I mean it's pretty modest the bed's quite it's like a single bed as well fine whatever <laughs> it's just a fridge out there with the stuff on it uh, very important obviously now I can hear stuff going on outside it sounds like there's a builder in the room and that is because we're opposite a construction site. <laughs> and the bathroom, well, firstly the door opens into the bathroom, which is fucking stupid. And, well, this is it. I mean, the tiles are good, 
I was like, where's the shower? Well, there it is. So it's like a wet room, I suppose. That is uh, the aircon thing just sticking out of the uh, ceiling. This is still $50, 40 quid. This is still 40 quid in Iraq. I can't fathom the prices here. And once you start to go lower than that, things get horrendous. And one of my friends said he stayed in a hotel. Now, $50, by the way, is about 60, 65,000 Iraqi dinars. Now, one of my friends said he stayed in a place for 10,000 dinars. So imagine one sixth of the quality of this. And it doesn't go down linearly. The quality drops off exponentially. Okay, not only is this the worst place to stay, but it's very dangerous. Look what happens when I turn the shower on. Just a little bit, it's in the middle. Look at that. What the fucking hell is that? Oh. And when a drop touches me, it's fucking hotter than the sun. So I was gonna wash my hair in the sink or something and this is doing exactly the same thing. If I turn that on, look, steam comes out of the tap. Oh. The steam is coming up there. Yeah, there's me hiding behind my towel. And it's like boiling every time you touch the water. So it's now not usable. So there's no water basically. That's cool. So I checked out that hotel as soon as I possibly fucking could. That was one of the worst hotels I've ever stayed in. They didn't do breakfast either, even though they said they do between seven and 10. It says on the wall everywhere. But he said because of Ramadan we dove in a hotel. So that was pretty annoying. But I came to this place, which is amazing. It's open all the time. Remember, it's Ramadan right now. We don't just eat it in the street. There you go. <laughs> Salam. We got myself. There you go on both phones. Now. <laughs> well, nice to meet you. What is your name? I'm Ali. 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 I'm officer and mystery officer. Good job. Listen to that. Yes. That's cool. Right, yeah. That's cool. Sounds like a good job. Yes. And he wants I'm to come to the UK. From College of Mass Media. Amazing. Yes, uh, College of Mass Media. College of Information. I hope you can get a visa to the UK. We need some more agricultural ministers, I think.